Uh, hi everyone. So uh, actually, I'm making a new video today, uh, which is in another topic. Uh, basically, not so much uh, related to uh, narcissistic abuse, but uh, I thought that I think I wanted to. You know, I'm I'm actually following up on something that I've uh, made last time about uh, you know why I end up leaving my um, you know the whole thing about. Being, I mean, being a former evangelical, and deciding that I don't want to have any part to do with that, because um, and also uh, the decision to actually, uh, in the end, uh, explore that possibility of uh, converting to Eastern Orthodoxy, and I believe that actually I'm pretty much on the way to it, um, because uh, right now I'm not able to because of my whole. You know, to go to church and everything is, is really, really hard because uh, right now, because of my work and everything, and um, it's actually really, really hard. And uh, But I'm, I'm actually in the process of quitting my job to move on to something else so that I can actually make my weekends free. And yeah, this will probably happen around next year. And yeah, I'm planning that. And also, I'm actually exploring some other um, options such as a new career. So, uh, yeah, part of that whole thing uh, was actually a very, it was a very clear decision, actually. I wanted to actually um, leave, I mean, I left academia quite a long time ago, but uh, after leaving academia, you know, I actually went on to teaching ESL and uh, English, and uh, I found that at one point in time that, you know, after, you know, after, like, all this teaching and in between teaching and uh, dealing with my own personal trauma and wounds from certain experiences including like narcissistic abuse, uh, church hurt, things like that. I, I really realized that you know what I wanted to do was to uh, instead of just you know uh, staying the person who was actually like recovering or healing from my trauma, I wanted to actually use that uh, experience of having recovery, I mean recovery from it to help other people and uh, so I decided that you know I want to actually go on into the option of uh, clinical psychology and counseling and yes I actually hope that I can make something out of it uh, during this later half of my life so I don't really know how many more years I have ahead of me I mean to be on the positive side uh, considering that I'm actually my mid to late 40s uh, and uh, you know I'm, I'm I still have quite a number of years to go to be on my finances before retirement uh, and also because I want to actually move away out of Singapore so I actually have a lot of things to really look into but uh, okay uh, I'm just gonna actually do, do, deal a little bit more with the um, reasons why I actually decided to convert and uh, to become an Eastern Orthodox and uh, why I'm never returning to evangelicalism <laughs> probably not in the immediate future or anything of that or, or like that because uh, okay uh, you know the thing is that okay the first reason is uh, we talk a, a lot about um, you know like uh, church hurt okay this is something that I always actually talk about but uh, from from that prior video I probably give someone uh, some people the idea that it, a lot of it has to do with the uh, radical fundamentalism of that particular church that I, where I was uh, baptized in as a member and uh, yeah so uh, it was actually um, I mean the way that most people know of uh, you know how religions are being practiced here in Singapore is that it's actually extremely extremely dogmatic and fundamentalist so um, from the point of view I mean the, the worst the worst thing was actually from my point of view was actually being in a fundamentalist uh, I mean they call themselves Bible believing but it was really fundamentalist because uh, there were certain things that they were really extremely legalistic about and I think that uh, that particular church Bible Presbyterian Church I was at was considered I mean the moderate ones among the fundamentalist churches which was kind of ironic because uh you know okay the other the original i mean i don't want to really end up naming names but it's just that's a known truth that in the original first uh bible presbyterian church here in singapore i think it's new life 
there's a tendency to actually among the leadership to actually uh, prescribe certain uh, legalistic rules to members. So, for example, uh, the women must actually dress up. Uh, they must wear dresses. Yes, they must wear dresses when they go to church. You know, uh, they must. The idea of dressing appropriately is one thing. I mean, I mean that I don't have any issues with, but um, they then they go on to the idea that you know what, uh, members of their church cannot watch movies, cannot listen to pop music, and uh, I mean in the certain kind of scenario, like I won't call it the worst case scenario, but it's just a very universal thing. Um, the Bible Presbyterian churches are extremely fundamentalist to the point that they try to control your life. Okay, this idea of uh, control is something that I think factors into the legalism of these churches and how they are able to create church hurt via that. Okay, uh, I probably have haven't said something about this, but uh, years ago actually I. I mean, many, many years ago, actually, I was actually in the process of actually doing my, uh, I'm not just doing, but uh, actually applying for my PhD. And uh, and I actually applied for different, you know, universities to do my PhD. Uh, part of my, actually, my field of uh, research was actually medieval studies. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's now considered a recondite field where, you know, there are not many professors teaching that. Uh, so, obviously, at the point in time, to do research in that particular field, I would have to actually, uh, you know, find a university where there are, you know, available staff members or faculty members who are capable of supervising that topic, and who are actually qualified and knowledgeable in the topic. So I mean, where else to go but a Catholic university? Because I mean, there isn't any real like secular university that I know of. Uh, not much anyway, which would actually have a, you know, a department in medieval or Byzantine studies, and um, and then you know what. The moment I mentioned that thing about convert, not not converting, but to study in a Catholic university, you start sending alarm signals. You have members thinking that you want to convert to Catholicism when you're not, and they try to come in between you and your choice. Uh, I still actually applied regardless of that. Okay, so uh, I had the offer to be honest. I was actually um, offered a PhD uh, in medieval and Byzantine studies once. Uh, there was in two thousand and two thousand four. Yes. Uh, Catholic University of America and it was contingent upon me actually uh, finishing my master's down here uh, but the only reason the only reason why I didn't take it up was not because I didn't want to do it I actually wanted to do that PhD but I realized that funding would run out after a few years and um, considering my uh, relative lack of uh, facility with Latin and Greek to be able to actually uh, finish the coursework fast enough uh, you probably take about more than four years, probably five years or so. And of course, uh, you know, this kind of things with PhDs is that um, you want to actually be able to clear those foreign language requirements, that, I mean, immediately from your master's onwards. But for my case, uh, I guess the only one that I could probably clear was actually probably French. Uh, there were other things like, you know, German, which need to be cleared. So I didn't take it up because of all these reasons, not because of that particular church's uh, you know, stand against Catholicism, but, um, and even ca- studying Catholic universities is so ridiculous, it's so legalistic, but then, I realized something else, okay, the legalism extends even into not just the university of choice, the school of choice, but even the subject of choice, okay, um, there's a very strong anti-intellectual trend among Bible Presbyterian churches, especially as a fundamentalist movement, they try to hinder your studying of certain subjects which they regard to be satanic or worldly okay uh including philosophy and psychology okay there is no sense in it okay psychology is the uh, scientific study of the brain how it works and how it can be applied in an in a, in a non-medical context so there's actually a lot of uh, connections to things such as neurology as well um, not always necessarily sociology, but a bit of that as well. Uh, it actually complements the subject of sociology. But you will realize that in certain denominations, such as Bible Presbyterian denomination, uh, the churches actually anatomize, yeah, anatomize, they regard that as satanic. And uh, it's not surprising that uh, in the Bible Presbyterian or Presbyterian denominations, 
I have not seen many psychologists or clinical psychologists because they regard these people to be doing Satan's work. Uh, I obviously left before <laughs> before I could get excommunicated for <laughs> for choosing to study that. And uh, yeah, I haven't had that kind of experience before, to be honest. I actually had one classmate who told me because he was actually attending uh, New Life or Life Pres- Bible Presbyterian Church here in Singapore with his parents who were actually members there. And he told me one story where, you know, it's so ridiculous. His mother was praying for him, okay, praying to God for him to do badly and fail in his philosophy so that he did not need to actually, so that he could not major in it. I told her, you know, it's so ridiculous because I told a Catholic student of mine about this incident (laughs) many years ago. That was, and the first thing that this, you know, this Catholic uh, uh, kid or student of mine uh, he's actually 16 this year, I think 16 or 17. So he said this, this is really terrible. Why would parents want you to do badly in life? Uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's not as if you're doing satanic studies or, <laughs> or, 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 you're, or you're joining a cult. But, but yeah, 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 you realize that the whole thing is so ironic that for their claim that this is not good to study the thing, um, they actually end up behaving more like those people in a cult, trying to control you. And yeah, that was the one thing. And I kind of realized, uh, you know, the whole thing about church hurt is, uh, you know, it was so ridiculous. I, I, I think that the other second reason was, uh, you know, why I left that uh, whole thing and decided, you know what, I'm actually better off without it was uh, that whole, okay, the, the, whole, the whole thing, uh, the whole spiel about them being the, um, how should I say, arrogant, uh, judgmental, and very 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 unloving people okay um there was a thing that actually a friend of mine who actually left to be to not to go to another church told me about this uh bible presbyterian churches here in singapore uh but he said you know zion uh, okay now the you know the name uh now the pastor has changed so i, I don't think it's uh, even a poem pastor it was actually actually says just some just some members okay and uh but of course there are some very really really ridiculous issues like um the, the general church culture is very extremely uh, standoffish. Okay, standoffish, being standoffish and being, you know, unfriendly is one thing. You, you claim that you don't want to actually uh, give glory to men, so you do not clap hands. Nobody claps their hands in church. But at the same time, nobody really, nobody really says hi or speaks or greets, greets each other in church. So it's like, oh, going to church is like going to a business conference and... Uh, Sometimes I, I, I wonder myself, why are they always so unfriendly? My, that friend of mine who left to go to another church, uh, actually another Presbyterian church, but I think it was a little bit less uh, controlling in certain aspects. He told me, oh, you know, Zion is really unfriendly. Uh, I was like, okay. Uh, I don't think it's just that particular church. I think it's across the board. When you are in a church that is extremely uh, you know, legalistic, it is going to behave that way. So, um, I mean... You know, no, no offense, but just, just the way it goes. Oh, you know, like instead of just you know blaming them and whatever, I chose to leave. And uh, at the point in time, you know, there was one point where, okay, uh, for those who don't or are not aware, um, there's this particular very strange influence that I think um, Bible Presbyterian churches have, uh, which are not emphasized at all in other denominations mainly in Bible Presbyterian and Presbyterian denominations. These two denominations. The Bible Presbyterian, the word, adding the word Bible is in, it really implies that it's a really a fundamentalist, extreme fundamentalist and conservative uh, alignment uh, or denomination. But, uh, you know, the one thing is that they have this belief in uh, predestination. Okay, uh, to just sum it up and um, to sort of summarize it, what, what it means. Okay, predestination uh, in the very Calvinistic sense and which is also being adopted by um, the Presbyterian and the Bible Presbyterian movements uh, is because, um, you know, John Knox, the founder of the Presbyterian denomination or movement, uh, was a very close friend or associate of uh, John Calvin. And uh, I mean, there's a joke about them being both John, John's, but I mean, that aside, um, the, 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 the way it's being taught in um, the Bible Presbyterian movement is extremely uh, non-logical and illogical. Uh, okay, uh, I'll tell you why. It's uh, from a very theological perspective. Okay, the, 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 the 
the understanding of predestination according to them is that okay you know what before all time has begun uh you know god has decided who is going to go to heaven okay who's going to be saved so uh for the extreme hyper calvinist basically god has also decided who is going to go to hell uh okay theologically this is actually a very illogical thing okay you cannot you cannot actually get them to actually explain it once you try that doing that they will turn against you and become really really mean okay trust me they'll become really really mean uh i asked them this one question so let's say um they most most bible presbyterians nowadays just say oh no 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 god god doesn't uh predestine someone to hell um but but he predestined someone to be saved and therefore to go to heaven i would i asked him this question um so are you saying that okay because god has predestined some who is going to go to heaven what about the rest just because he didn't decide that they will go to heaven hasn't he already by 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 default of not having chosen them chosen that they will actually go to hell and they couldn't i mean this you get the binary of this this whole situation and they keep on denying it and, and okay if they don't deny it um they'll be saying no 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 you're just a heretic you're you're, you're a Pelagian, you're, you're, they'll start calling you names and doing ad hominem attacks. Uh, I remember that that one person who brought me there, uh, okay, by the name of Michael Gunn, okay, I'm, I'll, I'll say this about him. You know, initially he was very friendly uh, and never trying to bring me there, but, you know, as time went on and on and on, you know, he started like, um, he, he kind of realized the whole thing about this, this control thing, that the way he actually, you know, abusive or toxic relationships actually begin uh, even in the aspect of friendship and things like that uh, begin with two factors there are two factors power and control okay uh, power is establishing dominance over someone control is trying to you know hinder what he or she does and believes uh, and I think that uh, basically that person was actually guilty of both trying to establish both over me because uh, you know that they say that you know what someone is if someone is friendly to you you know just take it as that no but 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 it was not the same case it was like uh, you know in the case of uh, they say that you know they say that people who don't like you will eventually show their through their true colors and I actually had a feeling that they didn't like me okay regardless of what they said um, okay why did I say that okay uh, you know when I was actually in need of help uh, that was in 2020, 2004. 20 to 2005 i was uh, in a serious need because i actually i had left my second master's program i didn't complete it uh i was really depressed because i wasn't in a real proper job uh i was going from you know odd job to odd job and uh, jobless and you know i had an issue with my own family you know the thing is when you are in a very broken not broken setting not not, not necessarily broken family but broken uh family situation or uh, where i mean between, between me and my parents i couldn't agree at a point in time uh, and I'm, I'm depressed emotionally. I mean, the, 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 the ones who are actually, um, who are actually understanding will tell you, you know, you, you need to maybe just find a counselor or a psychologist or psychotherapist who is understanding to help you to go through this. Okay. And uh, it, I'm not talking about going and see a psychi psychiatrist to get medication because, you know, there's no point in always just medicating everything. You can't medicalize, medicate or medicalize the pain away. It doesn't make sense. But, uh, you know, counseling helps and, and uh, you know, but at that point in time, uh, I will tell you very honestly, no one, absolutely no one in that church helped me, okay? Uh, and uh, it was very unkind, but uh, my, 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 my worst case scenario was actually the whole thing. I mean, when you know that the church itself is against psycho finding psychologists, even if the psychologist is an alleged Christian, or even if the psychiatrist is a Christian, they have issues. It's like you are trying to stop someone from having access to um, mental health care, okay, and, and and support. That is in itself another vector of it, the a vector a factor of the the control and power. But okay, but the return to the whole thing about that that the thing concerning predestination. Okay, I actually um. No, you knew that I I know that at the, at, at some point after you know like you know exploring the catechism, I mean I still got baptized regardless of the fact that I didn't believe in the you know that the stuff because it's a very non-essential thing that when it comes to faith, faith is faith. It's regardless of whether you believe that you're the elect or not, but 
you know that that person kept on that that particular Michael kept on pushing it, pushing. It. I got very sick and tired. Uh, he was also like you know quoting like specifically very Calvinist teachers like uh, John MacArthur, um, R.C. Sproul, and uh, he was like you know dissing the charismatics or dissing um the more middle of the road or even bunch a whole bunch of them not just him but uh, they were dissing Methodist and and other 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 denominations. So uh, at a point in time, I kind of realized, you know, am I in a privileged club uh, setting trying to enter it? And I realized that I wasn't keen on entering that kind of privileged club setting. So, uh, yeah, so that, that, that particular third thing was about the, the way predestination was being taught. Uh, you know, just because God knows everything, him being that he, who he is, that he's omniscient, doesn't mean that he... He actually dooms people to actually go to hell, <laughs> and then they will say, you know, they will say, oh, like, oh, or that he will doom people, just some particular people for no apparent reason, and and it's a very very random doctrine which makes things very lazy because, uh, again, I will say that it is very lazy theology because uh, it actually stops people from actually trying to evangelize to share what we believe in. Uh, you know, it's one thing we have this thing, like you know, in John three sixteen, is it, you know, God for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that uh, whosoever believe in in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting, but we have everlasting life. Okay. For Calvinists, they will insist that the world doesn't mean the whole world; it only means the world of the elect. So you can't tell someone who is not a believer. Or let alone even a believer, God loves you because they do not know if the person is elected or predestined to be saved. Okay, you get how how restrictive and how unloving it is. Yeah, it's, there's no love in it. There's no love in the God of Calvinism or, or the Bible Presbyterians. So uh, God is like a master. You are a servant. And I was thinking, oh, are we, are we exactly, what kind of religion is that? Uh, are we going? Uh, I mean, there are some other religions in this world which which actually believe that God has already decided everything. You know, like who's going to go to hell and who's going to go to heaven, and there's a certain even a fixed number. You know, like you have Jehovah's Witnesses believing exactly that is one hundred and forty four thousand <laughs> uh, people. And, I mean, they take things that literally. So uh, now now you realize that okay, with with that kind of uh, extreme extremist teaching on that that is going on. Uh, I mean, it's I mean it's not extreme in the sense that you go out and you know kill people, hurt people, but it's really extremely literalist to the point that some things are taken out of their original context, such as the, you know, the Jewish context of like, you know, God choosing Israel as a nation regardless of everything, but hoping that, but even wanting all the world to be safe as well through Israel. Uh, okay, that, that, that is a uh, really, yeah, I was like, it doesn't make sense to me, but uh, the way they explain it and, and okay, but back to what happened when, when it came to that doctrine and the whole lazy theology. Okay. The lazy theology leads to really, really unkind behavior, okay? Unkind, unloving behavior. Uh, that was the one thing, you know, at one point in time, I started doubting my faith. Am I going to go to hell? Or I, you know, that, that particular person, he kept on saying things like, you know, just because I didn't believe in it, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, I'm like this. And he tried to, you know, try to pretend that, oh, I'm, I'm talking about this preacher. He didn't want to name the person, but I know that he's referring to John McCarter. He keeps on quoting him like he's an idol or or something. I was like, you know, you say that you don't have any idols, you don't have any, like, uh, celebrity figures that you want to quote because you are alleged, uh, you know, Bible-believing Christian, you only believe in the Bible and Jesus Christ, but uh, at the same time, you are citing all these people who are, you know, quoting that one particular radical view of the Christian message, and uh, that doesn't have any love in it, so uh, I, can't, I can't in honesty, you know, associate with that. Uh, but back to the way he was behaving, you know, they say that, okay, people who don't like you will indeed show that they don't like you. And he did actually end up doing certain things or saying certain things that showed that he didn't like me. Uh, I was actually kind of late during certain times for the church service. Uh, I mean, I'll admit, it's actually intentional. I know that it wasn't a very good thing. And uh, some friends like who are not Christians were asking me, why, 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 why were you late then? I said, uh, I, I don't want to face those people. <laughs> I felt that it was really horrible. Um, I'm going to church to be abused. 
um maybe maybe they don't I they, maybe they don't they don't understand it but uh, yeah that was my exact experience so you know the normally the church actually um they'll close the door for worship after a certain point um so that late comers cannot come in but after a certain point they will allow the late comers to actually go back in after that so that you can you know hear the sermon and uh, hear the sermon and everything but um yeah, that was the thing. And then, you know, the, what he said to me was like, he said something very rude. Uh, that was uh, on the, another occasion outside because at that point in time, he was like, uh, you know, like doing some stuff as a, my, my personal trainer. Then he said, oh, uh, well, you should come in around. Uh, it was a very sarcastic, very sarcastic, unkind statement. Saying like, something like, uh, oh, uh, you might as well come in around uh, 11 or 12 after everything ends or whatever. I, I was like... Uh, I mean, you don't like me, right? I mean, he, he, he always says that I have a bad attitude. Uh, I'm a whatever, you know, and things like that. Uh, basically, outside of church, he was just criticizing me. And uh, it was like really verbal and emotional abuse. Uh, spiritual abuse, actually. Um, but too bad, you know, spiritual abuse is not being prosecuted here. <laughs> uh, neither is it prosecutable. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing, the way he was behaving. I guess that even if I were to actually just name him right now and, you know, post this video onto YouTube, and if he manages to hear about it and, uh, you know, our friends will, or some people will just tell him what, what happened, I guess he will still be in denial because, you know, gaslighters and spiritual abusers love to do that. Okay, uh, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Okay, uh, I'm no longer a Bible Presbyterian Christian. Uh, I'm not, not, I mean, as in, I'm not a Bible Presbyterian Christian to begin with, but I was just, a, you know, like a, uh, an attendee or a Christian who was trying to, you know, learn more about what I really believe in, you know, to try how to find ways to explain it to other people. But uh, it turns out that the way they were doing it was uh, driving me further and further away from my faith. So, uh, yeah, it's like you're putting a big stumbling block or stone in front of me and telling me to just, uh, you know, just take it and then, you know, climb over it. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, that's the thing. So anyway, tomorrow I'm going to go to church. Finally, uh, Orthodox Church for Vespers. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it because I haven't been back to an Orthodox Church for a long time. And, uh, you know, that I, I, honestly, honestly, I will be saying, okay, I don't have anything against my, I mean, back in Canada, I was in a, a Lutheran church and things were fine, you know, and um, I actually missed that place because I had my all my friends and, you know, like Lutherans, uh, they're really a cool guy. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I think that at this point in time, after exploring some things about my faith and belief, I always, you know, tell people that, you know what, uh... I'll tell you later why I actually, I will, that's why I always say, I'll tell you later why I want to convert to Eastern Orthodoxy, but, because uh, it's, it's really hard to just go around, you know, whatever, but, uh, okay, this, this uh, three or four little nuggets of truth or, or, or not personal experience as to why I end up uh, leaving the uh, evangel evangelical movement and uh, deciding, you know, that's it, okay. That's it for now. Okay, so the first thing, okay, the church head thing was actually the um, what should I was say? Uh, yes, the unfriendliness. Okay, there was an unloving nature. Uh, okay, then there's the you know the whole power control thing. Okay, power control thing, and then um, predestination. Um, lazy, which I mean, which in in or you know, just predestination, but many other things such as you know even the one safe only safe thing. Oh, oh, one safe, always safe, yeah. Uh, and all the whole tulip five points, which led to really, really lazy theology. So people don't even actually evangelize or, or share their faith anymore or even say God loves you. Okay, it's like, there's no love in it. Okay, and the fourth one uh, simply being that, yeah, it was getting a bit nasty and toxic. Yeah, very, very toxic. Uh, beyond the first point I was saying about the legalism, okay. So uh, that's it for now anyway. Um, have a good weekend, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I hope I can really just get, get to church tomorrow. Just uh, instead of just uh, being skipping it again. I mean, I always skip because I have to work on Sundays. Yeah, but anyway, okay, that's it for now. Bye-bye.